Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I am going to be reviewing the continuation in a manga series that I have been reading and loving for a long time and that is Komi Can't Communicate. I am on volume 26. This is what the cover looks like. Apologies for all of the library stickers on the cover. I can't control that. So let's dive into volume 26. What happened? What's going on? And what are my thoughts on this volume in the series? So in volume 26, third year is in full swing. Komi is going into her third year of high school, which is the last year in the school system in Japan, which means that there's going to be a lot of lasts as well as a lot of firsts going on as she looks to what's ahead. Also in full swing though is Komi and Tadano's relationship. So we have our two main characters on the cover. We have Tadano right here and we have Komi right here. Things seem to be going well. Things are in, we are in the swing of things for the third year of high school. And after a little bit of a bumbly volume 25, we are now just going into the daily rhythm of school. So there's a couple key plot points that I want to cover in volume 26 and we're going to go through them and order the ones that I liked or the ones that I thought were kind of really key and important. The first one is Komi meeting Tadano's family. So Tadano has actually met Komi's family. He wound up going on an accidental little adventure with her dad, I believe it was at one point, and it was kind of sweet and fun. So Tadano has already met his girlfriend's family, but Komi has not met Tadano's family. She has not met her boyfriend's family. And that occurs in this book. There was a little bit of a misunderstanding in Tadano's family that I don't know if Tadano ever really caught on what was happening. His sister and his mom were both under the impression that he was dating a boy in their class and they were being very clear that they were being supportive and it was okay that he was a little different from them. He was going to be welcome and loved and of course Tadano's like okay what and he brings Comey and this is the first time that his sister and his mom realize oh he's dating a girl in his class not this boy in this class which causes a great amount of confusion and they are quite confused but Comey has had lots of practice communicating with people over the last 25 volumes and she takes it about as graciously as she can and we have this sort of awkward but also confusion clearing up meeting between Komi and Tadano's family. So now both sides have met the other's parents, the other's family, so we do have this little exchange. I did like that. I felt like that was kind of clearing up something that was going on in Tadano's life. And also, of course, at some point Komi had to meet Tadano's family, so I'm glad that that has happened in volume 26. This is all interspersed between the usual just little things that the author Tomohito Oda puts in this book of day-to-day -day life, such as going out to a cafe, trying spicy food. So there's all these little vignettes, I guess you could say, of high school life that are peppered in between the main plot points that kind of push the story along. Next up, we have something, an introduction of a character that I don't think I've seen before. I did not remember it, but it was honestly my favorite part of this entire book. And that was the introduction of the character Takitoshi Wakai. This is a boy who is on the soccer team. He seems to be quite popular and a lot of girls seem to have a crush on him, but he doesn't really communicate well with girls. He gets very nervous and uh, flustered when girls talk to him. And he has this little health bar that goes down whenever a girl talks to him. So. This is something that goes both ways, I feel like, among teenagers, where the girls are kind of nervous to talk to the boys, but the boys also have a lot of nerves talking to girls, usually, so it goes both ways. I have just really enjoyed this section. It was right about a fun comedy, but also realistic situation for me. I really enjoyed this section, and I feel like it was one of those sections that shows the author's strength. Obviously, in a 26-volume series, the author is going to write different sections differently, but this section, I feel like, just kind of showed everything that I like about the author in this series packed into one section. I don't know if this character is going to come back again, but I did like the section with Takitoshi Watai. Uh, and I can't find it off the top of my head. He was a, or Wakai, sorry, and that was a just a section that I really enjoyed in this book. Finally, we're in the third year of high school. So people are starting to look to the future and what the future holds. And one thing that this means for Komi and Tadano is university. It seems like both of them are interested in continuing their education at the university level. And during Golden Week, they decide to go visit a university together. Of course, this is kind of a ploy from Komi to just spend time together because she's been missing him, but they want to go visit this university because as third years, this is something that they're going to have to look forward to. They're gonna to have to think about what they're going to do next in life. They, in the talking about this, they definitely have this ex idea that they want to continue dating. And this is where I'm not sure if this is something that is a cultural difference or this is just a, a uh, manga stereotype, not stereotype isn't the word, of trope, that's the word I'm looking for, a manga trope. So I've seen this in other manga volumes too, where like a couple will be dating in high school and they'll talk about continuing the dating into college. And 
Now, I understand these are romance things, and if you read romance books that are set in the US, you're gonna get a bunch of tropes that are not realistic in real life at all. So on one hand, I'm like, this is probably just a trope, but I'm also very confident that dating norms are different in other parts of the world. That's a uh, known fact. So I don't know if it's actually also just more common for couples who are dating in high school, high school to continue that relationship into college. I feel like that is quite rare in the United States. Most people don't consider continuing their relationship from high school into college. I feel like that's a natural break point in a lot of people's education. A lot of people choose not to go to college, but a lot of people also will be moving somewhere else for college. It's just seen as a new, a new part, a new point in life. So it's almost like a natural break point for these early relationships. And I don't know if I'm just reading way too much into this. Am I like, is this a new cultural norm? Or, and it's probably just a manga romance trope. I'm not sure, but it's something I've seen more than once. So they are talking about continuing it. I'm just going to assume and lean towards the safer one that this is just more of a trope and the author doesn't want to have these two people break up for no reason because that would be a little sad. So that is just something that I'm seeing on the horizon and I wonder how the author is going to handle that. I'm assuming that he, the author doesn't just want to break up this couple because it's probably very popular with his fan base and he doesn't want to, yeah, split the couple apart just because they're going to college. I think volume 26 was really sweet. It was really fun. The author had a good balance of mix between the romance between Komi and Sedano as well as these fun little adventures with friends that high school is all about. So the author balanced those two very well. Volume 25, as mentioned in my previous review of volume 25, was a little bit of a miss for me. It felt very chaotic and it didn't feel like there was a very good comprehensive or cohesive narrative to move the plot forward. So 25 definitely felt like a weak point in the series and I was worried that 26 was going to continue to be weak. But I think when you have a series at 26 volumes, it's natural that some of the volumes are going to be weaker than others. It's very rare to have an author who can keep strong consistency across such a wide variety of volumes. And in my opinion, 25 was just a weak volume and Tomohito Oda, the author, continued his strength by writing volume 26. I feel like we're back up to the normal standard. And I think the author really bounced back from volume 25. What do you think? Have you been reading this series? And if so, did you think 25 was weak? Have you enjoyed volume 26 or the series thus far? What do you think about it? I'd love to hear and receive comments in the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you